Hi, it's Polly with Get Busy Thriving. I want to share with you today some thoughts that I have about, I'll call it consciousness or awareness, mindfulness, all of those things. It's something that I learned um, through doing a program called the Landmark Forum, and it was a very awakening moment for me. Talk about becoming conscious of yourself. And what I want to tell you is that the thoughts that you're thinking, your, your brain is constantly adding meaning to what's going on in the world. Like thoughts are just constantly spewing around in your head. I think they say that we have like 60 thoughts a day. <laughs> it's not matter we're like feeling, you know, running around, running around. But in those thoughts, what I see is people not making distinctions between thoughts that they want to think, thoughts that, that serve them, and being conscious of thoughts that don't serve them and then not agreeing with them or taking ownership of them. So in any moment, just become aware of where your thoughts are. Right? In any moment, we're thinking about pretty much a few things. One is the past, the present, or the future. So our time frame of what we're thinking about has to do with a memory, something that happened in our life and it lives in our mind. The present, what we're focused on currently, the person that you're talking to, the experience that you're having in the moment, or an experience of yourself, like something you're noticing about yourself in the moment. Or focuses on the future. So in our mind, we're living in the future. We're thinking about something, someone, maybe a meeting that we have, something that we have to do, a deadline, something like that. So there's three time frames that we're living in and our consciousness or our focus is upon. And then it's also focused upon ourselves or it's a focus upon something outside of us, a situation, another person, right? So those are the different areas of where we can be conscious at any one moment, right? I can be conscious of myself in this present moment and how I'm feeling in my body and, and what I'm saying. I can hear myself out loud or I can go into my mind and I can think of a, a past memory of a loved one or an event or a situation. And in the future, I can think about uh, maybe myself and someone else in the future, right? So we can have all of these going on at the same time or throughout the day, we go in and out of past, present, future, self and external world, all right? So that's just the realm of where our consciousness can be focused on, okay? And the distinction I wanna give you right now, and I want you to do this with me, all right? So this is an invitation to try this on as an exercise. So, what I became present, um, when I became present of my own consciousness at the Landmark Forum, it was through this exercise of, of listening to my own thoughts. So I want you to do this with me, okay? So you can, you can do this um, with your eyes open or with your eyes closed. Sometimes people, it, 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 it is more uh, in deepening um, when you do it with your eyes closed, but either way works, okay? So what we're gonna do in a moment is say, I am loving. But we're not going to say it. Like right now you can hear me saying it, but we're just going to say it to ourselves. Like inside, we're going to say it and we're going to listen. Okay? So when I ask you, say, I am loving, I want you to do it with me and I'm going to do it as well. Okay? And then just see what you notice. Okay? On three. I'm not going to say it out loud. You're not going to say it out loud. I want you to say it inside, like inside, your, inside yourself. So um, say it out loud to yourself inside, but not out loud so people could hear it. So... I am loving. One, two, three. What did you notice? If you're like a conscious human being, you heard I am loving inside of your mind. Inside of you, you were able to hear yourself speak that. So in that distinction, you could both hear it and speak it. Speak it internally, you might say. And that's how our thoughts are. That's how our inner dialogue, our inner story is going on, right? So who are we? Are we the one that said, I am loving? Or are we the one that heard, I am loving? Well, we're part both. But what I think a lot of us forget is that we can project those thoughts, we can create those thoughts, or those thoughts can be created. You know, sometimes the brain, the mind, is often saying things to us. Often it's in our own voice, so we believe it very deeply because we think it's us. But it's just a thought that we have, that we hear. And sometimes the mind works in pictures as well, especially in the future or in the past. But we can internalize, we can hear our own thoughts. I want to invite you to the idea that the you that is listening and that heard I am loving, 
That's the you that's connected to everything, the source of all things. That's who you truly are. And those thoughts, those fleeting phrases, things you say to yourself, whether they're encouraging, like, good job on that, or, man, I'll never do that again, or, you know, God, that deadline, I, I hope I can make it, I hope I can make it, or that person's me, you know, whatever we're saying, that's that inner dialogue that's going on. And it's actually one of the most critical conversations I think you can have because it's the one you most often trust. Or if you've gone through many years of addiction or disordered eating like I did, you begin to distrust your own thoughts. You begin to have a, a broken relationship there. But I just want you to get that that's what consciousness is, or part of consciousness, is realizing that you're the listener of these thoughts. Okay? So what I want you to do now, this is part two of this, to get more conscious of that, I just want you to sit for a moment and we're just going to sit here together and just, I'm going to give space because I'm going to stop talking because right now you're focused on me. But when I stop talking, I want you to go back into your mind, notice yourself as the observer, the listener, and watch what happens in your mind when nothing is going on in your external world. So I'm going to stop talking and then I'll start talking in a few, in, in a few moments, but I just want you to sit for a moment and be still and just pay attention to the internal, like we just said, I am loving. Pay attention to what starts happening in your mind without you doing anything. So you're not saying I am loving, you're just kind of receiving thought, if you will. So just sit in an observer, listener perspective. Don't attach to the thoughts, but just sit with them and notice them kind of in the, the landscape of your mind. And if it's better for you to close your eyes, then close your eyes and do this because you can almost hear it better or see it better with your eyes closed. So. I'm just going to pause for a moment and, and listen. So I'm guessing by now you've probably had a couple of thoughts pop up. Maybe some frantic ones. <laughs> Maybe some ones that you put off to start this video and then you need to return to because those are probably more pressing for you. Or maybe you just were paying attention to things going on in your environment. You were noticing things and then adding some meaning to them. Some of you maybe had no thought. If you meditate a lot, a lot sometimes you can have no thought, which is beautiful but oftentimes in a conscious state without going into meditation, our thoughts just happen. And that's okay. It's okay for these thoughts to happen. What I want to help you with now is I don't think enough people realize that there's listening to our thoughts and believing them and attaching ourselves to them and then noticing that there's lots of random thoughts that we don't have to believe. Right? And it's when we believe a thought and we think it's us or we think it's true or we think that's the way that it is or I am that we secure ourselves to that. We sort of start to begin to create a belief and we act from it. So when you can notice the distinction in your mind of what's going on between a thought and you listening and you can behave according to the way you choose instead of acting on any thought and every thought that comes up like, oh, I've got to do that. Well, do you? Or oh, that person's what? And it's like, well, where did that thought come from? And is there another thought I could think? Or what else could this mean? Or something like that, right? So the practice of self-awareness and consciousness is just what I showed you, which is becoming better at realizing the distinction between the, the thinker or the thoughts that are happening. I often say like thought bubbles, you know, they just bubble up, if you will, and the listener. So what I want to encourage you to do is if you want to take on being better at this, because a lot of times we just get wrapped up in our thoughts and they build momentum, and then pretty soon we've we've got you know emotions built up, anxiety, stress, worry, doubt, fear, whatever it is, because we're believing our thoughts. And the first step is to become more mindful of your thoughts every day. So simply having an intention to be more mindful of what you're thinking and what you're saying to yourself it's a game changer because oftentimes we go through life with blinders on just thinking thoughts, thinking thoughts, thinking thoughts and believing them even more importantly when not necessarily 
checking in, right? Like, like ass assuming that they're real, assuming that that's the only way that it is, assuming that, you know, have you ever had an experience where something happened, maybe you had an interaction with someone, you made up meaning like, oh, they're bad, they're wrong, they were late, they did, da, da, da. and then later you found out some different information about that person or what had happened to them that caused something between the two of you, and you went, wow, I didn't know that happened. No wonder they were this way or were late or couldn't make it or had to cancel or something like that. No wonder if I had known that then I would have acted differently or I would have thought differently, right? Well, it's in the moment when we can become more conscious and say, well, what else could be going on? And even to our own thoughts, right? Especially about ourselves. We have an easy way of beating ourselves up in a not so natural and easy way without conditioning of appreciating ourselves. We don't naturally do that. And I think some of that comes from the conditioning we get from loved ones and parents or people that model around us. A lot of us didn't grow up with parents who were super excited about themselves or their own life or, you know, believing in their own selves. So we didn't adopt their thinking. We didn't learn and model good self-care, good self-talk, if you will. So I encourage you, number one, just to set the intention each day to be more mindful, noticing the thoughts and just distinguishing between yourself and those thoughts, not just instantly owning that's who I am or that's true or I have to believe that because you don't. And then secondly, I encourage you to slow down. I know we hear this a lot. It's like, oh, take a deep breath, take whatever. But even just in the practice of mindfulness, first is self-awareness, is aware of the thought. Being more mindful is like, hold on. <laughs> Let me ponder or consider this. Because when we can take even just a slight pause, who gets inserted is the listener, our empowered self to choose a different thought, to choose whether to believe this, kind of checking in, you know, from the, the, the neck up. It's like, wait a minute, I just thought that, but let me check in with all of me. You know, your heart has answers too. Checking in with yourself deeply, like, is that true? You know, do I really think about that, about this person or about myself? And sometimes we just get so wrapped up in thinking that we don't pause. So becoming more mindful, being an intention to be more mindful of our thought. And then secondly, just taking a moment, it just takes a moment of pause. It doesn't have to be forever, but just noticing the thought that you think and then choosing it instead of just naturally going with it. Like, oh, that's the way that it is. Or, you know, instead just pause and go, wait a minute, if I keep thinking this thought, <laughs> what's, what's gonna happen? I'm only gonna feel worse, or I'm really not gonna be happy with this person, or I'm gonna be, you know, I'm not gonna get things done, or I'll be more afraid of that deadline in the future, if you're thinking about something in the future. And then lastly, it's a practice. You know, you're not instantly gonna be mindful. <laughs> like, you won't be this guru of mindfulness in an instant, right? And, and that was a little discerning to me because I thought, oh, now I'm conscious. Now I realize what's going on. Well, I still get wrapped up in my own thoughts. I still get wrapped up in story and storytelling about myself. And if I don't catch myself, if I don't practice daily mindfulness, and again, I think meditation really is a great teacher for creating that space, creating that distinction, strengthening the muscles of mindfulness and choosing thought or choosing no thought um, so that's where meditation can help you get that gap. But even if you don't do that, setting the intention each day, being paying attention to it, trying it for 30 days, and then noticing it's a practice. You will get stronger at it, better at it, like a muscle. You will, you will gain um, strength in choosing, pausing, you know, contemplating thought instead of just instantly acting on it. So I wanted to share that with you. I hope it's helpful to you, and uh, go practice it. Enjoy.